smashing China, I try out a new kind of driven pheasant shooting in the hills above the Yellow River. Because in the UK we shoot them in the air. Ah. <laughs> Plus, taking it lion down, I visit the first ever China hunting show in Shanghai to find out what the Chinese think of big game. Emerging battered and bruised from the general license farce, Andy is back out protecting his crops in Kent. But yeah, these people said, what are you doing? I say, oh, shooting pigeon, crop protection. And uh, I said, yeah, pigeon shooting is banned. You think, way up. We have another exclusive offer. We have 15 Browning Black Label trail cameras available for a special discounted price. And we're celebrating two major milestones in 2019. In August, we're 10 years old, and this is our 500th Field Sports Britain. To mark it, we have our biggest ever competition prize giveaway, £1,900 worth of Remington rifle, GPO scope and accessories. From here in China, welcome to Field Sports Britain. China. It's where pheasants come from. It's also a mystery to most shooters and hunters. First of all, there's the scale of it. One fifth of the world's population lives here. Imagine Europe and most of Russia all governed by Rome. It's a civilization, not a country. And of course, they enjoy shooting. They are the top or will soon be the top medal winners in shooting sports at the Olympics. So, where do you find shooting or hunting sports? It's not easy. There's hunting available beyond the Great Wall in Chinese Inner Mongolia. You can click on the link in the description to watch my film from 2013 about shooting in Canton province and on a fantasy island in the South China Sea, off Shanghai. Imagine my delight to find a website advertising walked up pheasants in the north of the country just an hour's flight from Beijing. Two hours drive from an airport in a polluted coal mining city is the clear tranquil range of the Taiyu Mountains bursting with wildlife managed by government rangers, paid for by hunter tourists. Liu is my guide, Jane my translator, and Sia comes along to operate the camera. We have a Chinese-made Willys Jeep, bottled water for the 70 degree heat, shotgun cartridges, and 200 square kilometers, about 50,000 acres, all to ourselves, of beautiful hill country above the Yellow River Valley, the cradle of China's thousands of years of culture. I am shooting over ground known to the Ming, the Tang, and, go back more than a thousand years before the birth of Christ, the Duke of Zhou. And I bet he was a great pheasant shot. So what are we after? Yeah. What did he say? Pheasant. 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 And where, where will he see them? Will he see them sitting in trees or will he see them sitting in the grass? Where will he see them? They'll be hiding in the grass. Yes. And can he see them even though the grass is quite big and there's quite a lot of plants here? Does he find that easy? It's simple enough. We drive and drive and when one of us spots a pheasant, we stop and walk it up. You could call this countryside Alpine. There are little farming villages, helpfully signposted. There is a lot that's familiar about it, such as magpies and wild strawberries. Then there's a lot that's distinctly Chinese. There are high pastures and mountain woodlands where the locals run horses and other livestock. Like the Alps, the animals have bells around their necks and they seem to believe they have right of way. Liu is the Andy Crow of China, always on the lookout for birds. After a few false starts, okay, misses, we finally get onto the bird I came for. Liu puts down some of the birds here, but most are wild bred. 
He was wild bred in these hills too. He has been working as a gamekeeper since 2003 when the hunting opened up here. The job is not as hard as gamekeeping at home. Compared to the open woodlands of the UK, the thick cover makes it easy for the birds to raise broods in the wild. Back at the lodge, a new batch of cockbirds arrive for release. Out on the drive, we see pheasants on the lek, and there are plenty of bugs for them to eat, which don't even bite. Well, they didn't bite me. Liu says he carries out boar, fox and badger control, but the big problems for the pheasants are the raptors, which are protected. There is night shooting wild boar, fox and badger here if you want it. There are roe deer, which you can stalk in the daytime. On the wall of the lodge where you stay is a photo of the Greek ambassador who came here for the boar. We run into a farmer who asks Liu to shoot a wild boar that's been digging up his crops. You can shoot them with a shotgun with solid slugs. The quarry is priced on a trophy fee basis, with boar at around £350 each, down to pheasants at £15. Cartridges are pricey at £4 each. There is other wildlife too. We catch a glimpse of an unusual pheasant, a magnificent cock brown-eared pheasant, here disappearing into the bush, with, inset, what it really looks like. This is a nature ramble, but with a shotgun. The women and I keep wanting to stop and pick flowers, which I think Liu finds unnecessary. But eventually he crumbles and even helps us take artful pictures. I'm happy with the break because I'm not finding the shooting easy. Birds fly, but they do not fall out of the sky. I can see Liu wants to offer advice. So, slight, slight breakdown in translation. Did he want me to shoot it on the ground? Yes. Oh, I see. Because <laughs> in the UK we shoot them in the air. Ah. ah but now I shall t tell him I will now shoot them on the ground. Okay. And I'm very sorry. Right. It's all right, it's all right. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> so, when in Rome, that's what we do next. But shooting birds on the ground is not as easy as I thought it would be. It's a bit higher. Thank you for the advice. However, like bad workmen the world over, I start to question my tools. The shotgun they provide is surprising. It's a 12 bore made in China by the Shi Zhe Firearms Manufacturing Plant of Hanan Province. It has an unusual name, where Holland and Holland goes for an aspirational name, the Royal, and Blaser and Browning numerical names such as F-16 and B-725, Shi Zhe chooses the Squirrel. It's a box lock, non-ejector double trigger over and under. The first unusual thing you notice is the stock, which is basic plastic. Despite the light weight of the stock, it's a heavy gun, so you have to concentrate to keep the barrel swinging through the birds. Then there's the engraving. On one side is roaring red stag. On the other are elephants. And then, as if to pull the rug from the whole ensemble, on the stock is raised a moulding of Bambi meets Hello Kitty. Get your hands on a squirrel. It's worth the experience. As for the cartridges, the box suggests they're made under licence for Olin Winchester, but someone pointed out that maybe they muddled up the English letters in the brand name Lion. It's hard to judge what shot size they are, but I have suspicions. Suspicions which are confirmed when Liu asks me to shoot a cockbird on the ground. I'm guessing big shot and not a lot of it. That's the bird that brings about my early retirement from ground shooting. Back to shooting them on the wing and last bird of the trip scuttles into woodland as we approach it. Then up it flies. Total bag for the afternoon, followed by the morning's shooting, four birds. One advantage of China is there is no messing around hanging birds or even freezing them. What you shoot, you eat that night, and it's delicious, bones and all. Would I come here again? Definitely, no question. It's one of the best foreign bird hunting trips I've been on. The people are superb, the scenery and wildlife are magical, including flights from Beijing. The whole night and day either side came in under £500. If two of you went, you could get it down to £350 each. That sounds pricey for four pheasants, but if you only want to shoot pheasants, stay in Hampshire. The room at the lodge is comfortable, the jeep is not, the food is challenging, it's an edgy kind of hunt, and I reckon that they are the best kind. China is an extraordinary place and its influence on the world of hunting will be enormous. How 
it is accessed by Western hunters. We'll have to wait and see. Now, he didn't go to Azerbaijan. That's a long story. But back on the Field Sports Channel News Stump, it's David. This is Field Sports Channel News. It's all steam ahead for the Countryside Rally in London this weekend. Marches are coming for a variety of reasons, including the government's chaotic handling of the general licences and the bias of the London media against hunting and shooting sports. People should meet at Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park at 11am on Saturday the 29th of June, and the rally will then march on Parliament at 1pm. Birmingham has officially dropped shooting from the 2022 Commonwealth Games. In an idea floated last year, Birmingham is thought to be embarrassed that it was the world centre of gunmaking for over a century. The government has asked the NRA to produce a Commonwealth Games-styled event at the same time in 2022 at Bisley in Surrey. The NRA has not yet commented. Grouse shooting campaigner Simon Grace is looking for help. He'll be back in Yorkshire facing off the Antis on the 10th of August as the League Against Cruel Sports takes to the streets to persuade the public to sign petitions to ban the sport on Yorkshire's moors. He's looking for help in the town of Bradford. Contact him on Facebook. Link is in the description. Animal rights protesters have left death threats outside a Gloucestershire butcher's shop. Molesworth's family butchers in Frampton, Cotterill, South Gloucestershire was targeted by campaigners telling him to rot in hell. The DSC is to get a sister qualification for wild boar control. In recognition of the increase of feral wild boar in the UK and the need for their management, Deer Management Qualifications, DMQs, will be launching a wild boar qualification in early autumn 2019. The standards of the qualification recognise the need for wild boar to be managed effectively and humanely. A new fungus threatens wild salmon. Anglers are reporting fish caught displaying signs of skin damage and lethargy. More of a threat is Scottish Government's advice to throw all diseased fish back into the river systems. The Antis have scored their final failure in Botswana. A recent ban in the country on big game hunting led to human-animal conflicts and in the latest, 500 vultures died after eating poisoned elephant carcasses. Happily next year, hunting restarts in Botswana, so the elephants once again have value and scenes like these are less likely. A woman who was fined £150 for feeding pigeons in Bath may be let off. Sally Ann Fricker broke off a piece of sausage roll and fed it to the pigeons. Seconds later, she was issued with a £150 fine for littering. Now Bath and North East Somerset Council is reviewing the fine. A poll in Holland shows support for hunting animals for meat. The Dutch Hunting Society asked members of the public and hardline animal rights activists from the Animal Party if sustainable use of hunting animals is acceptable as picking mushrooms. The left of the graph shows those that agree strongly. Only 18.4 of the Animal Party are against the idea. Thanks to Eric van der Horst for sending this in. Deer are dying in Japan from eating plastic. A report by the Daily Telegraph shows that six of Japan's sacred Nara deer have died from eating plastic left behind by tourists this year alone. One of them had three pounds of plastic in its stomach. Meanwhile, a photo of a crow in Japan baffled social media users this week. Dubbed the Gorilla Crow, its legs are hidden behind its wings and its tail is up and hidden behind its body. You are now up to date with Phil Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And there's more news on our website. F Channel is the fastest way to get there. Coming up, we've got a cracking rifle competition, plus more from China. First, it's a Field Sports Nation exclusive offer. The Browning Black Label trail and security cameras are the smallest high-performance cameras on the market. With black IR and a range of 70 feet, they're ideal for checking on the wildlife or the lowlifes checking out your property. These retail at £150. We have 15 of them available for £120, a £30 saving. For more information and to buy one, go to fchannel slash trailcam. Good luck, but be quick. Last week, the Peltor Air Defenders sold out in just a few hours. Next up, Andy Crow is back where he should be.
We can see what they've done, they've, they just go out into the tram lines along the edges and then they pick up the ears, everyone's the same. They pick, they pulled that off, they've taken one, two, maybe three grains out of that one and then dropped it. And you imagine it, well, there's hundreds and hundreds here. Imagine that all the way around this 80 acre block. It's just crazy. And as you can see, they go all the way down the edge, right the way along there, all the way up. And, and if they're not doing that, they're in the tram lines. And then in the end, once it gets a bit riper, they all get on, they, you get three or four on top of it and they just pull it down a bit. And before you know it, it they just take a line. They just keep, keep taking it and taking it. This field behind us that was raped this year, it was wheat last year, there was areas out there three, four, five acres that they just pulled down. It's just, but shooting them is just hard work. It's usually the first couple of times you can, you can have a good go. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we'll shoot a few this afternoon. I'm hoping anyway. <sighs> Famous last words, that one. The last time we saw Andy, it was at the very start of the general licenses to Backle. Now we're coming out the other side, it's an opportunity to reflect on the obvious and not so obvious impacts on people's lives. Lucky they sorted out the general licence when they did really, because that field of beans that you videoed, that we re-drilled up over the top there, the whole of that's written off. There's not a bean out there, we just could not, whatever we did, we couldn't keep the jackdaws off of it, and they just hammered it, hammered it, hammered it. UK shoot warehouse, I spoke to them, they've had to lay people off. People think, oh, it's just, we have to stop shooting, but it's not, it's people losing jobs over it, well, lost jobs over it, and Nick Tate, if it hadn't picked up when it, well, hasn't come back when it had, I'm pretty sure he would have gone under. Yeah, it's not just about, um, we're not allowed to go shooting, well, if no one's allowed to go shooting, they're not gonna buy stuff, and, but I, I spoke to uh, UK shoot warehouse this morning, and uh, Chris there, he, he sounded a lot happier than he did two weeks ago. Time to set up shop for the jackdaws. The hide is sculpted out of the hedge, providing as much cover as possible. As we know, corvids are crafty blighters. This bit of rake was a, a failure and I just mowed it off um, the other day just to get rid of the weeds. Um, but yeah, and it's ideal because as you see, the jackdaws use these trees just to drop out in the wheat and all those trees there. But a lot of them, they come either through there or through here to get to where they're feeding. So I thought, well, we've got a bald bit here. What I'll do is I'll just set some decoys up here. There's been a few pigeons feeding on the rake because it's a bit thin. So what I'll do is I'll just set some pigeon, few pigeon decoys up out here and load of crow and jackdaw decoys and see where we go. Andy has done some shooting, but not as much as he probably would have done. He thinks the fallout from the headlines could affect shooters for a while. He's had people who wouldn't normally give him a second glance now questioning what he's up to. These people walked up, they come and stood behind me. Well, I stood up at the end of the field where, the, where my truck was parked. And I looked and I thought, oh, I don't know. I thought I'd better go and speak to these people. I went over there and the first thing they said, what are you doing? So I walked around and he said, um, pest control on uh, pigeons. I said, they're eating these lupins. And, and they turned around and said, do you realise it's illegal to shoot pigeons? And usually, that wouldn't even come into people's mind. Walkers, they'd hear you shooting, just keep walking. But now, because of the social media and the coverage that, um, that it all got, um, people, people that don't usually no, don't take any notice of pigeon shooters, they're, they're thinking, of course they're pigeon shooting. I don't think they're allowed to be doing that. And I explained to them, I showed them the licences I had, and they were fine about it but they, hadn't, they didn't realise that it was all changed. But so they've seen the headlines, but they haven't actually seen it through? That's right, they haven't seen the headlines to say it's all been reversed. They see the headlines saying it's, it's been banned, but no one's put in the press to say it's back on again. All us pigeon shooters, farmers, we all know, but the general public don't know. They make a big thing saying it's banned, it's banned, and of course, and I'll see a few more pigeon shooters get in the same trouble, and well, hopefully they don't, but, but yeah, these people said, well, what are you doing? I say, oh, shooting pigeon, crop protection, and uh, I said, yeah, pigeon shooting's banned. You think, well, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, but no, I have carried on, and um, yeah, I thought, but it, it's, it's a job for me, it's something I've got to do to protect my crops. You see the damage that these jackdaws have been doing, well, I've, so I've got to, got to keep on top of them, really, so, um, but that's why, as soon as I could, I, I got myself a licence. So, uh, 
but it's just a case of like this I've tried to keep them off with bangers but the problem is this time of year it's not as easy to, to use bangers the banger goes off set the bleeding field alight I've got two jackdaws here. This is an adult one here in the left hand. See the white on its head and its eyes and its beak, its old beak. It's a youngster. So it's still got the, the yellow there in the corner of its beak. That's probably flown, it's been fledged for probably 10 days, two weeks. So you say about the age of the beak, just because it's elongated? No. It's stronger? It's, it's a stronger beak, a darker beak. See, they're still soft. These are, these are there. They're rock hard. You want to get pecked by them. That's the reason I don't use my dog on jackdaws or any corvids. He only wants one peck from that. I assume what they do to lambs. So I certainly, certainly wouldn't want them to do to my Labrador. So, but yeah, see how the head's, head's totally different shape. And you've still got the yellow in the corner of the beak. Just there. Andy's shown his face at a couple of events recently. The Jack Pike Open Clay Shoot and the Field Sports Skills Day with Braces of Bristol. He was manning the clay stands and had plenty of people wanting to ask about and use his Blazer F16. Maybe Blazer don't realise, but he's got two at the moment. Of course he gets asked a lot of different questions on days like that and one that keeps cropping up is battery usage on earplugs. So he's doing a bit of a consumer test on his new Bluetooth Varios. They even allow his musical side to is. shine through. Well this pair I've got here, um, I've had five days use out of them, and I mean five long days, and I've had no problems with the batteries at all. Um, I mean, it, what has been an issue with these and other brands, but um, I can honestly say these, I'm not impressed with how long the batteries have lasted on these. Um, it's the same batteries, I want to see how, how long they last a day. Um, so, but no. So it's, it's a question I get asked all the time, oh we have problems with the batteries going flat. Well with these I can honestly say that I haven't had, I have in, in the past, with these and another make, but with this particular, these modules, I've they're lasting me. Um, sorry. Of course, you're not supposed to do that, are you? What's that? Lick it and then stick it in your ear. No, you're supposed to put stuff on it. Well, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer, David. You have used lubricants all the time, I hear. Don't believe everything you hear, David. You look like you're about to uh, play with the Rolling Stones on drums. Cool. You want to hear me sing? Good. Yeah, I was singing away yesterday when I had them earplugs in when I was mowing the lawns. I was singing away and everyone was looking at me and thought, man, what an idiot. Because thought... you, were, you were listening to tracks on your phone? Yeah, I was. Yeah, through me, through my phone. Through the Bluetooth. Singing away to Jess Glynn I was. I thought I was good, but... I thought I was good, but... I'm not so sure that everyone else agree with it. But you were drowned out by a lawnmower at the same time. Yeah. It must have been awful. Well, not to me it wasn't, it sounded really good. So they improve your singing as well as actually improve your hearing? Yeah, do they? Yeah, do they? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it sounded really good. I'll, I'll plug it in later on and I'll give you a... That's all right. No, oh, okay. Oh, Ricolos, don't let me go. Oh, no. <laughs> Right, your shells are called clear pigeon, not uh, clear jackdaws, but they seem to be doing the job. They do, they're doing a, doing a great job. Um, struggled a little bit at the beginning, I was shooting in front of everything. Um, yeah, I was shooting in front of everything because they, they just flop along these old jackdaws. Um, yeah, I just come back a bit on them and, and we're straight on them then. And, but no, they've, I've been using, like I've said before, I've been using fibre and uh, I'm getting on really well with it as it goes. It's just a case of tightening the choke up a bit. That's all I've done. Just tighten the choke up, hold the pattern together a little bit more. Yeah. 
Bosh! Down. Wow. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with fibre. <laughs> ah, nothing wrong with that. That was up there. A monster. That was a monster. Yeah, it was a monster. He definitely wasn't coming in the decoys, but... <laughs> Couldn't even see the decoys. <laughs> ah, nothing wrong with five, you put it in the right place. With half a dozen pigeons and about 60 jackdaws, it's been a successful pest control day. It's a slight dent in the population, but it's given the wheat a day off from 500 wheat munchers. Talking of 500... Well, I've got you. Uh-oh. 500th show. Yeah. Did you ever think it's going to happen? <laughs> when I did the first one, that was number 69 was my first show. And I can remember doing it. It was in the field at the back of where we are now. And I, I can remember thinking to myself, I ain't never going to do another one of these. I was so nervous. Um, it didn't quite go. To, well, it did. It went to play and we shot a few pigeons. It was good fun. There's no point leaving it if they're not coming. You just keep trying things to see if you can get them to, to come into the pack. I think I said yeah. you were raised by pigeons, did I say? Yeah, that's, that's what was said. Yeah, raised by pigeons. I can remember that. Um, yeah, it was quite a laugh. Yeah, but here we are. Number 500 is still here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Don't say any more. Do not say anymore. Don't say any more. Don't say any more. I'm open to offers. I'm open to offers. <laughs> if there's anyone else there. always open to offers. Yeah, well, if there's anyone there, if, if someone there wants to film me, I mean. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I love the job. Thank you to Andy. And thank goodness for Andy. David's family would have starved without him. No comment. Thank you, Crow. Now, our 500th show. So we have to do something a bit special. Buying David some Just For Men, well, that was an option. Happily, Ray Trade, the UK distributor of Remington Rifles and GPO Optics, came up with the goods. We are giving one lucky British-only viewer, sorry to say British-only, a chance to win a new Remington Model 783 Varmint Synthetic, available in either 223 Rem, 6.5 Creedmoor, or 308 Win. I'll say that again, 223 Rem, 6.5 Creedmoor, or 308 Winchester. And it comes with the new GPO 4X 3-12x56 eye scope, plus there are Remington and Evolve accessories. To enter our biggest ever competition, all you need to do is like the Ray Trade UK Facebook page, there's a link in the description below, plus like this show, plus write the calibre you want in the comments below. Good luck, entries will be drawn on July the 17th. Now, back in China, here in China, I leave the peace and quiet of the Shenxi Hills and go to the loud noise of Shanghai to visit the China Hunting Show. noisy, it's big, it's fresh. It's the 2019 China Hunting Show. Let's have a look around and see what the standholders are finding out about the Chinese. Over the years we've had three or four groups and um, we just thought it was a growing growing potential market. How did they so, behave when they came? Yes, they were great. They were awesome. Yeah. We're based in the central North Island of New Zealand and our main, the main animal you'll come to hunt with us is big red stags. So we have some of the biggest in the world. We've shot three world records at Broadview Hunting. We take them through the steps, we teach them to shoot the gun, and we only let them, we only let them take the shots if we feel comfortable. Everybody came here basically with the thought of it could be a new market. Nobody knew what it had in store for any of us. I think it has a lot of potential. I think everybody thinks it has a lot of potential. The questions we're getting, I know, to everybody here, it's new. Uh, there's no aid coming from their side. We haven't seen it. Uh, so it's, for me, it's nice to see somebody not jumping to conclusion, to try and explain what we do, uh, the reason we do it. So um, it's, for me, it's positive. For me, it's great to be here and to, to explain to people why we do what we do. Of course, the organizer sees huge potential here. Uh, China hunting market is a new market, and more and more Chinese hunters they uh, go to Africa, other countries for hunting every year. And hunting, in our idea, hunting is a culture. 
So we have been developing this business over 10 years in whole whole the country. And right now, uh, after a couple of years, you know, uh, education to people, to let them know what is hunting, to let them know what is wildlife conservation. And until now, right now, more and more people come with us. So I think this is the best opportunity to operate, uh, to develop the show in China, to let more and more Chinese hunters be with us. The China Hunting Show is part of the Shanghai Lifestyle Show, which includes a food show, a boat show, a noisy fishing show, and this device for improving your badminton. One of the safari operators here has worked out how to leverage the Chinese interest in fishing. Put fish pictures on your stand, and that gives them a way in to talk about your animals. I, I didn't realize this before coming here, and, and seeing how big the fishing stands in this hall are, and how much uh, energy they put into it. I realized they really like fishing. Um, we do tiger fishing up in Namibia, um, so changed the stand a bit, added our, our uh, big pictures of the, of the tiger fishing, and uh, it's got a few people that uh, seem interested in the fishing, so I'll follow up with them once we get back home, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. It's not just hunting. One of the great old stages of the world gun trade, Dexter Barnes, is here. He has a number of hats, and one of them is former coach to the Chinese Olympic trap team. A lot of people in shooting here are gearing up for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. China's prospects are looking quite good at this stage. We've got men's trap qualifications, women's ski qualifications. We haven't had men's trap. We've got women's trap as well, two, two in women's trap. And we haven't had that in the previous few last two Olympics. OK, we had them in in 2008 of course because we were a host nation here in, in Beijing so we've, they've also hired another foreign uh, a foreign coach uh, an Italian Italian man so he's helping helping greatly as well it, it seems he's helping simply because we've we've won the quota spots so it, it's looking very very prosperous for us as well as the popularity of trap shooting he Lee brother of organizer Jerry Lee wants to develop sporting clay shooting in China we got very good interest in this show, over six, seven shooting ground in China. They never saw English sporting, but they really, really have interest to, to take part in. Jerry, do you, do you agree with that? Do you see the show as Yes, a... I think it's very big potential to, uh, you know, uh, to create a market. Right now, I could, you know, Chinese hunting market is very new and very young. We need more and more experience to get uh, English sporting, uh, to get more training for Chinese hunters. And the other reason is uh, China, the government only uh, you know, allowed a shotgun for hunting. So that is why we developed this one. Back to the hunting part of the show, and anyone who thinks it is banned in China, well, have another think. It's thriving. Ramon Chang runs one of the many hunting clubs in China. Uh, we are a very big hunters club, right. we got many members and they are all entrepreneurs and those who like uh, outdoor shooting and hunting. Yeah, usually they hunt the balls to help the farmers to protect the farmlands and they also uh, do clay shooting in China and also they, they will go abroad to, to hunt around the globe. Uh, and for traveling and for hunting. Well, it's been an exhausting four days. I think what we're going to find out for next year is whether we continue down this hunting cultural road of standing in stands and handing over pieces of paper, or whether we go for the full Chinese menu option, which has got red, blue, green flashing lights and big sold stickers on everything. How would you like to serve up hunting in this Chinese restaurant? It's amazing, this whole place. Now, from China to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. What is it about ratting? The West Midlands Rat Pack is out in farm buildings, introducing the black patter-tailed puppy that already has the nickname The Dark Destroyer. I'm including this single shot because it is such amazing footage of a hunted fox and how it runs. Andrew Edwards from Ireland films it, and the three hound collie bull crosses right behind it. Monteria in Finca Las Lomas in Spain's Extra Madeira shows us classic Spanish Monteria, including extraordinary drone footage of a hunter 
hunted deer. Germany's hunter brothers head to Scotland for the goat stalking. They are calling them in on the Scottish islands. Kyle from Canada comes over to New Zealand to hunt bull tar in the mountains of the South Island with Gerald Flirty from Wildside Hunting Safaris. This film is on J.E. Wilde's channel. Want to stalk deer but don't have much time? The Capriolis Club puts out this promo video about its services. Goose shooter Tok Portfleet in the Netherlands is out on a warm day in a film that covers the whole day from hide building through to picking up afterwards. And finally, Yorkshire Gold. To anglers that means barble. Here is a film that's a work in progress but one day could become a fishing classic brought to you by Beneath British Waters Mark Barrow Underwater Media. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. And of course, you can pop your email address into our register page at the bottom of our front page. The quickest way is F Channel. And we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can back us. Go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares or fchannel slash shares. Find out more there. I will see you next week when I'll be back in the UK. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. And goodbye. <laughs>